This conversation came up in a session recently with a client. He had gone through an absolutely horrific breakup with the mother of his children. They'd been together for nearly two decades. All of a sudden, she started creating tension in the relationship. She started picking fights. And he didn't know if he'd done the right thing or if he'd caused something or if he'd provoked something. But when I started digging deeper, there was actually a pattern of completely unhinged behavior throughout the relationship, including destroying his car with a baseball bat, including picking fights with him in front of the children or in front of friends or trying to destroy situations for him. And in this case, she incited him to go and work in another city. And then she complained that she was working in the other city and said that he had abandoned the family. And he kept thinking, it must be something I've done because it's not possible for people to become this unhinged. And of course, when talking with other people who don't know about these personality disorders, they also think it must be something you did because it's not possible for someone to suddenly become so unhinged. So let me share with you the exercise that we did together. I suggested we rate toxic behaviors on a scale going simply from zero to 10. To some extent, the scale is going to be different from person to person, but we can probably agree on certain things. We can start with, well, What's the worst behavior we can imagine? I'd suggest the worst behavior would be akin to murder, being willing to kill another person. That probably is a 10. Some might say even that is a nine and willing to kill multiple people on a regular basis might be a 10. And that would be, you know, a fair point. So how about we start calling this murder? An eight might be something like being willing to kill pets. Incidentally, I recently had a session with someone else whose cat had actually been killed by the partner of someone that he knew. That to me is clearly get into the psychopathic territory. And then we can go down from the nine to the eight to the seven. And I suggest that you rate different levels of behavior as being more or less problematic. We could also assess the level of violence that goes along with shouting, for example, or expressing physically uh, frustration. So one of the points he made, for instance, was that once or twice in the entire relationship, he had actually hit a table with his hand because he was frustrated once or twice. He didn't hit the table multiple times. It was one time slamming the table with his hand. And he said, well, maybe that's why. Maybe that's what pushed her over the brink. Maybe if I hadn't done that, she would have been normal. So if we take this concern seriously, slamming the hand on the table, well, clearly it's not a 10. It's not worse than murder. It's not as bad as murder or mass murder. It's not a nine. It's not as bad as killing as killing pets. Slamming on the hand on the table would be somewhere below killing pets. And you can decide if for you it's a six or a five or a four or a three. What matters is that you have some idea of where it stands. Then conversely, we can start building up the toxicity, the zero toxicity, never doing anything toxic. Well, you know, that might possibly be the case. I'm assuming the Dalai Lama is somewhere close to there, but I think even Buddhist monks and the happiest people around will say, well, you know, sometimes we get a little bit impatient, but with all of their years of meditation, I'm assuming they control it pretty quickly and they nip it in the bud. So we could assume that sometimes getting a bit frustrated might be a one. Maybe sometimes raising your voice is a two. Maybe being short tempered and sometimes a little bit unfair with someone might be getting into three territory. This might be the yellow territory and so on and so forth. Now, when he was talking about his partner destroying his car with a baseball bat, that clearly isn't as bad as murdering someone or as bad as killing pets. Nonetheless, I would suggest that we are already in pretty much unhinged territory. If someone starts trying to destroy somebody else's property with a baseball bat, that's not being a little bit annoyed, a little bit upset. That is feeling that this level of anger, this level of destruction is justified. And if someone's willing to destroy something with a baseball bat, I wouldn't be surprised if one day they try to destroy someone else, maybe with a baseball bat or maybe with words. And that's what she's been doing with this man. She's been trying to destroy him uh, by alienating his children, by turning people against him, by brainwashing him, by trying to make him feel he's crazy. I'm witnessing basically an attempt to destroy a person's personality. You don't see the bruises, but man, is it, uh, is it disgusting? So if we were to say, for example, that the baseball bat question, it would be around a six. Well, how much would the raising your voice once or twice be, I'm assuming it would be somewhat lower. 
maybe three, four. We can discuss that. Depends how loud it is. Depends exactly what people are doing. And also depends on the frequency. Getting frustrated once or twice over the course of multiple years. One might even say it's sort of saint-like. It also depends how the people were set up to express it. I wasn't there. I don't know. But I can tell that the reaction of destroying the car with a baseball bat is massively unhinged. Remember, in another video, we discussed the correlation between the outrage and the offense. On the one hand, we have the outrage, which we can, of course, assess between 0 and 10. And on the other hand, we have the offense, which we assess between 0 and 10. Logically, the more the offense is big, the more the outrage is big. Most of us try to minimize the outrage based on the offense, so we tone it down a little bit. So if the other person actually does destroy our car with a baseball bat, we don't retaliate and destroy their car with a baseball bat. If one person raises their voice and shouts, we don't try to escalate things, we tend to try to de-escalate things. And one of the things that toxic people do is they go straight up into outrage mode, and even if all someone does is ask a question, they start acting outraged as though it was the worst thing imaginable. Until we understand that this is just a scam, that it's not true, that they're not being honest, they're not being genuine, it's just manipulation, it can really mess around with our minds. So using this graph, let's just assess. If someone raises their voice every now and then, does it warrant destroying the car with a baseball bat? If it is really a problem that the person raises their voice, we can talk about it, we can see a therapist, we can recommend they see a therapist, uh, we can also decide to leave, but we don't have to destroy the property with a baseball bat, especially if then we hang around and then we blame the person, saying, I did it because of you. It's, it's not me, it's you. That's why I destroyed the car with a baseball bat. But I'd like us to take this one step further. Let's imagine we're taking the person's life path from the ages of zero to, let's say, roughly 80. And we look at the levels of toxicity from, from 0 to 10. We have two different models available. One would be saying that a person would be at a regular, let's say, normal level of toxicity. And in this case, what the man said, maybe it's something I did in the relationship. So an event happens that we tie down. And that event sends the partner to crazy levels of toxicity. So all of a sudden they're capable of doing things that a sane person, a healthy person, would never do and that they would never have done before. So it would be something, in this case, in the relationship where he said or did something that made her suddenly be capable of destroying his car with a baseball bat when she wouldn't have done it a few weeks before. That might be the case. I do not find that as credible. One of the reasons is we know that some children are psychopaths. They exhibit the traits of psychopathy from a very early age. And if they can be exhibiting the traits of psychopathy from an early age, it's not because of a bad relationship. Basically, if a bad relationship or a bad occurrence turns someone into a psychopath, they probably were just a psychopath to start out with, and they were waiting for an excuse to manifest it. The other possibility is that someone is capable of high levels of toxicity, but they hide it on a day-to-day -day basis, and sometimes it comes through. And this could be really confusing, because we might be thinking, wait a minute, normally they are somewhere along the screen line. Normally, they're pretty much okay. They seem normal. They seem decent. Might be the case. But remember, it's not a question of averages. If you put your head in the oven and your feet in the freezer, on average, you're at a good temperature. But what matters is the extremes. What matters is, what is the worst a person can do? If someone says, you know, on average, I'm rather nice, but I might murder your cat. That's not a person you want to be around. You know, on average, I'm a, a decent person, but sometimes I enjoy shooting people. No, you do not want to hang around anyone like that. Or, you know, the family next door, they're rather nice. But, you know, sometimes the kids go and stab others. You don't want to be around a family like that. The worst that someone can do is what determines how they are. That's one of the reasons why. See what the worst a person can do and then figure out, are they someone you actually really want to be friends with? You know, the other person is a generally nice person, just happens to like children a little bit too much. We send those people to jail for a very good reason, to protect other people, to, to make sure we're safe. Always pay attention to what is the worst that a person can be doing, and are we okay with it? If the worst they do is they hit their hand on the table, 
maybe twice over 15 or 20 years, and they apologize afterwards, overall, that's not quite the same thing as destroying somebody's car with a baseball bat and then trying to alienate the children and then trying to gaslight the person and set them up for failure and just mess around with them. It's not the same level of toxicity. So I suggest pay good attention, bear this in mind, and look at what your scale of toxicity would be. Look at where you plot the different things and look at how you have behaved on this scale and how they have behaved on the scale. If you see that it's roughly the same thing, that roughly there's a bit of give and take, or there might be a few arguments that are a bit too heated, well, maybe both of you need to tone it down. But if you see there's a massive skew between your side and their side, if you see that systematically they go way beyond what you're comfortable with, they're not doing that because of something you did. They're doing that because they are okay with it and they are blaming it on you.